Last week I picked up this drum sander to smooth out some veneer and I remembered to pick up some flex hose and some hose clamps for the two and a half inch uh, extraction port. But I forgot that I don't actually have two and a half inch connections anywhere else so I don't have any adapters to go from four inch down to two and a half inch. Now I could just put in an order for uh, some connections, some step down reducers, that sort of thing. But postage is going to set me back more than the item and I'm not likely to actually get it by the end of the week knowing the postage companies around here of late. And then I remembered my wife has a 3D printer. So I could print an adapter. It doesn't have to be the most durable thing in the world because I really only need it for one task and then once that's done I can look into more permanent solutions. So when I'm allowed in the house next I'm going to model up a 100mm PVC adapter that goes down to two and a half inch and it's going to be printed in PLA. So that'll plug directly into my dust collector uh, piping system rather than having like a four inch flex hose intermediate step. This isn't going to be a tutorial on how to model this infusion, more just showing the rough steps. I already measured and entered the variables I needed, so it's just a matter of drawing the circles. First up is the circles that represent the OD of the PVC pipe and the 2mm offset to represent the 3D object that is to be printed. From there I created an offset plane 35mm away and drew two circles for the 2.5 inch flex hose connection. The second and final offset plane is for a slight taper on the PVC side so it would fit over and hopefully create a snug fit. This was just slightly larger than the original PVC OD. Then it's just a matter of connecting the circles using the loft tool. If this is done all at once, it creates a much more dome piece than what I wanted, so it needs to be done in stages. Then it needs to be done for the ID rings to create a cut to hollow out the form. Finally, the flex hose side can be extruded out for somewhere for the hose to clamp onto. Once exported to an STL, it's over to Cura using the profile my wife gave me for our One Ho i3 Plus. That then gets sent to Octoprint, which I could monitor from my phone while in the workshop. So I guess with that printer, the big two questions are, does it work and was it worth it? Well, on the does it work front, you can see all the dust inside there. <laughs> yeah, it works. Fits great over the PVC and also fits on the flex hose. So was it worth it? Well, one of the two big woodworking stores in Australia sells a tapered reducer like this. The other one only sells these step down ones like this, which aren't quite as good for airflow. This is a two inch port. So can really only get it from one store. That's fine. If they don't have stock, I'd be even further out of luck. Their price for the adapter is $8 and then there's another $11 in shipping. So we'll ignore shipping for now because you know I had to ship the filament and power use and all of that. This worked out about $1.90 worth of resin. Yeah, it took three hours to make, which is quicker than driving to the store and back or getting it delivered over like a course of a week. So for something like this, yes, it was worth it. Does a 3D printer have a place in a woodworker's workshop? Well, probably not in the workshop because it's very dirty in here, but you know, the printed items. Adapters like this, $2. Adapters like this, $8. Doesn't take long for that to add up, but still doesn't justify the cost of a printer. I can't find any commercial uh, templates like this that let me set up my grinder for the tool rest on it for a perfect 25 degrees and I can do custom angles. Again, probably not justified. I could make that with some plywood. It was just easier to do it. 3D print took about 30 minutes and I was doing other things at the same time. In Australia, you used to be able to get these painter's pyramids and then they weren't sold anywhere. So I printed some. Again, these are lots of little reasons that might add up to being justification for one. In my case, my wife already had the 3D printer, so it wasn't a hard sell for me to use something we've already got. I can't see myself using them on any furniture items, but I could see making jigs like curved templates, printing them out and then using a bearing guide on a router. There are other adapters like, uh, I know my first Makita random orbital sander had a weird port and Makita Australia didn't actually sell it with a vacuum adapter. So that would have been something I could have modeled up and printed very easily. In the companion article, which links in the description below, I'll have a list of a bunch of 3D printed tools and woodworking-ish items, which I think are neat. 
The list isn't exactly extensive. I think I'm probably limited in my thinking where I might go for subtractive manufacturing, CNC stuff versus additive manufacturing, 3D printed stuff. If you use a 3D printer in a workshop or the items in a workshop, let me know. I'd love to see what I'm missing out on. Thanks for watching.